There is something outside of us that's allowing us to live. You got all four fingers on that pulse within you. Now close your eyes and just feel that pulse and coordinate that pulse with the heart beat, your heart beat, until you feel that oneness. And breathe long and deep through your nose. Perfect. My name is Dr. Siri Satnam Singh. I'm a licensed therapist. This week, I'm sitting with a young man who is dealing with drug addiction, loss of friends, and guilt associated with past decisions. While overcoming the challenges and temptations of living on the road with the California punk band, Waves. This is Nathan Williams. So you ever been in therapy before? No. Never. Not once in my life. My girlfriend even has told me I should see a therapist because I'm crazy as OK. Well, I'm not thinking in terms of solving problems. I'm thinking about it just being allowing you the safe space to be present to yourself so you can feel what you feel and process your life. I try not to think about any of it too much. That's okay. basically the approach I've taken to my whole life. What does it feel like to be you? It's a little um, uh, heavy, I guess. A uh, one big sort of um, fork in the road for me and a lot of my friends and ended a lot of relationships was just uh, constant drug use. OK. Um, Heroin was really big in San Diego at the time. San Diego once had some of the lowest heroin use rates in the nation. At any given time, we have anywhere from a third to two thirds of our population seeking treatment for heroin. And it's really being infiltrated in that young population, unfortunately. People associated the heavy drug use and the drinking with me. I'd say for me personally, I don't know about the others, but romanticized it and um, a lot of our friends died because of it. So I kind of dropped off the face of the world in sort of a self-preservation sort of thing where if I'm going to continue to do this, I'm going to eventually die. Or, what period were you doing heroin from? What age to what age? 17 to 20. Wow, 17 to 20. That was a rough period. So you had money at the time? No. No, you did not? No, we stole a lot whatever, but no, I never got caught or put in jail. So there's something about you that's, uh, you're, you've been saved. What does that feel like to you? You got out of a heroin addiction, you didn't get caught stealing. Sometimes I feel like, uh, since it hadn't happened yet, that I'm still waiting on that sort of, you know, sickle to, to come and. So you have guilt that you have not released. It's like you've been released into freedom and you still don't even know that you're free. Let's go there. So I'd say the thing that probably with me the most about all of it yes. is um, the friends that I had that were lost, one in particular. Some of us were starting to clean ourselves up and he was not as... Um, Diligent. Yeah. And um, uh, he didn't come into work one day, and uh, he hung himself. There's always this part of me that thinks, you know, like, somebody should have tried harder, or somebody should have done something more, or... And he wasn't the last one either. That's the thing, is it just kind of keeps happening. And then, like, you know, a couple months ago, it was another friend of mine that had happened to it, so... I guess... Um... I don't know. It keeps coming so close to me, it feels like sometimes like death is 
not chasing me, but very close behind. I don't know if that's guilt or if I think that it maybe if it just as easily could have been me or if it should have been. In a lot of your videos, there's death. Yeah, it is a constant theme. I mean, in, in your videos, it sort of took me into the netherworld because there's the day world and there's the netherworld. Right. And the day world pathologizes the netherworld. And the netherworld pathologizes the day world. There's a threshold when one goes from the day world into the netherworld. You, you went through the threshold and you seemingly resided there for a period of your life. Down here in the netherworld, it's a little scary. Yeah, it's okay. also more comfortable more comfortable. Sometimes it's just what I'm okay. used to. I generally find pleasure in the things I shouldn't be doing, I think, still. Can you talk about one of those things, just one that you feel safe to share? I still drink every day, mm -hmm. no matter whether I'm feeling good or bad. Of course, your drink of choice. Whiskey rocks. Whiskey rocks, okay. How many do you have a day? If I go out, you know, seven or eight. Wow, that's, does that seem like a lot to you? Yeah, that's probably too much. Probably too much. So another way of reframing that is that you need to alter your existence, you need to alter your perspective, you need to alter your consciousness. It's almost like a friend. Okay. Because a lot of my lifestyle, you'll have hordes of people and, and tons of fans and, and you're always talking to somebody, but in my head, I'm still, not, you know, relating to anybody 100%. So I feel like even though you can have a bunch of people around you, you still feel like you're alone. I've, I did a tour once, generally sober, after a stretch of some bad shit. And it was fine, but that spark or something is not there. You know, I get the musician who does a job yeah. and the musician who's being himself. The musician is touring for eight months or whatever, completely drained because he has to do a role and he has to do excess to do this job. But if he was present, like Nathan is here now, I just wonder what that would look like. Yeah. Fame. I don't. What's fame for you? Uh, I think people sometimes think that fame, w once you get fame, it, it cures a lot of whatever your problems are. When in reality, I think that it just creates more problems. For me, it was uh, paranoia and anxiety. There were moments where I'd go and I'd tour nine months or whatever. I'd see people every single day. It would be fine. And then after a week at my house, it would be crippling to try and leave, to go to a grocery store or to do anything. And now I feel like I always sort of have my guard up. I have this, these two polar opposites. And sometimes I feel like there's this guy which you were talking about, like the fame, right? There's this person, Waves, and then there's this other person, Nathan, who I don't know. Wow, that just evoked a lot within me in yeah. terms of, for Nathan, you know, who is like the punk rocker, yes. We want the punk rocker. He's the one that made the money. Right. And has, you know, but Nathan is not interesting? That's a conflict. Huh? Yeah, it is a That's conflict. A conflict. Uh, it is. And now here we are trying to find that balance. In one of your videos, the child mm -hmm. is, his innocence is taken away. Uh, in Demon to Le Lino. Was that you? I never even thought about that. It's almost like in uh, Greek mythology, Persephone is taken down into the underworld mm -hmm. by Hades. And you were taken, this child was in the day world and was taken into the netherworld and there were the demons. 
Was there anything in your childhood where you feel like your innocence was taken away? Both my parents worked, very religious household. Okay. Um, which was not my That's interesting. favorite thing. You said something very powerful, you realized. Religion. Yeah. What didn't you like about the religion? And how did you react as a child? Did you go to the church or? Oh, I had to. Christian schools, youth groups. Okay. You know, when you're growing up, you think that, you know, God could come and get you at any moment and they tell you that. No. So you reacted unconsciously because it was so interesting to me in your, you know, your videos take us into the netherworld, but your lyrics at times mention God. I thought that was very almost antithetical. Now you see how you... I, yeah, I've never, I've never thought about it until you say that, but there is a lot of religious symbolism, lyricism throughout the whole thing. Yeah. You created another religion. What was in the day world, your parents' world, mm -hmm. you created a whole nother vision of a morality. You know, and looking at your uh, videos and not pathologizing, I was like, I'm so glad you had your music. Me too. Why, why would you say that? Because it was therapeutic. Yeah, it is. It helped you. If you didn't have your music, I would be a little con you know, yes. concerned for your welfare. That was the only thing that got me out of any of the situations. Yeah, so you were healing yourself and didn't really know it. If we don't pathologize, you see, you were sitting into what was unconsciously yeah. happening within you, you know. Wow, what are you feeling now? Played this festival and took a bunch of drugs. The guy at the label basically said that I had ruined my career. I'm very impressed with how present you are here. Even though you say you have challenges doing that outside of this space. We talked about before the Nathan and the punk rocker, mm -hmm. musician. Right. Uh, I know you had that horrible moment in Barcelona. Mm -hmm. what, the, what did the breakdown look like? I don't the meltdown. Know. Oh, you don't remember. <laughs> what did they tell you you did? Um, I got in an argument with the person that I was playing with on stage. No, we're not done yet. Pick up that stick. Get back here. Hey. Uh, couldn't finish the songs, insulting the crowd. I just kind of blew the show, I think. I canceled the rest of the tour. The guy that was with me at the label basically said that I had ruined my career and they were going to drop me. And I, I flew home and kind of got my head straight and just started writing more. And then I wrote my next record that would... So you didn't stop. How resilient of you. I wanted to stop. Okay. My dad urged me to, 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 keep, to keep at it. So I took his advice. It was good. Mm -hmm. So self, have you, do you know who you really are? Your assets, your talents, why you're here on the planet? Mm, no, I, no I, I, I don't know who I am. I don't know, that one's hard. I have feel no, I've never felt any spirituality in my life ever. And I, when I was younger, I used to think like, maybe I was doing something wrong. And that's why I couldn't hear God talking to me. And um, I think when I got older, I realized that I just didn't believe. You've mentioned God a lot for a punk uh, musician. <laughs> and spirituality is different from religion. Now spirituality is all about you. For you to get in touch with your spirituality, maybe it's going into the forest. Right and feeling that nature. And it's a search. Yeah. It's not, uh, you have to want it to really find that path that is right for you. I've always kind of felt like, I'm just like searching for what I'm supposed to be doing or what I'm here for. Then when I think about that, the idea that I'm here for some reason, I think it sounds silly. 
because in my head I feel like it's far more random than that. But nobody's like you. That's, if you go into that arena, you'll come to understand there is no one like Nathan Williams on the planet. You are as rare as the one Mona Lisa. That makes you very special. I can play music like you. Very few of us can. To write the lyrics you can. Wow. Hmm. So to get off, that's the Nathan. That's the unique one you. That gets off again to that, that spirituality and self-realization are really sort of hand in hand there. Yeah. How am I? Why am I? And who am I? And you answer those questions without... I think it's always changing. So it doesn't have to be in some type of metaphysical or therapeutic uh, position that one takes to heal. Mm -hmm. You will not succumb to your drug addiction and a physical death. The death of your career. Some people have moments like you had and they don't come back. Yeah. So something has compassion for you. Yeah. A lot of compassion, <laughs> huh? Yeah. Something outside of you, yeah, which I... you didn't create you. So there's an author outside of your existence who authored you. I can get behind that. Yeah. I like, I, th yeah. Yeah. So if I you just sit that. into that and just keep leaning into that, you may find your spirituality. You've gone to the underworld and made it back safe. A lot of your friends didn't. Therapy, you know what, it's, it's really therapy of the soul. And we've gone soul, and now we're into spirit, and I'm feeling a very enlightened man in front of me who is not aware that he has a calling uh, to be at one with the light and, and worship of the light, relationship to the light. This is what I'm experiencing. So this spirited, elevated man is giving a lot to the community. Talk about that for me. Um, we opened this shop in L.A. as a sort of sanctuary for kids that any aspect and walks of life, if your home life is not good, you can just come and hang out there. There are arcades and stuff like that, or even if the home life is good, just for some sort of sense of community. And so that's kind of become our sort of calling at this point. Well, I mean, as in, just in terms of archetypal presences, you are embodying the healer. And I want you to feel it. I think that will bring you into the realization of who you are to feel what you're doing. Just listen to the work that you describe. Is that a normal, just average person? N no. Okay. I, no. Okay, you see what I'm talking about? Yes, yeah. That's priest work. That's healer work. Hmm. Maybe this is getting in relationship to your calling why you're on the planet, that you have received, gone through things, and now you want to elevate, shift, enlighten, inspire. Hmm. What does that do to you? What's coming up for you that this, that your soul is unconsciously speaking through your work? I think what I'm actually doing, even though I don't know it, is I'm sort of preaching to kids that were maybe in the same situation I was or something like that. Tons of times we've had kids come up to us after shows, before shows, waiting and say, I just needed to tell you this. I was thinking about killing myself and I heard your music and stuff. And that, uh, um, definitely um. you now are coming back to yourself you've gone to the underworld 
and made it back safe. A lot of your friends didn't. That was your soul's journey. Mm -hmm. You have done nothing wrong your entire life. You've made decisions that have had reactions, but it was part of your soul's journey. And you're still on your journey. And I think your, your way of finding spirits is the best you know how at this moment. But now that you have another relationship or another way to access spirit, so be it. Yeah. What does it do to you to have that realization or insight or... I think the willingness to accept that we're all on a path somewhere is, is big for me because sometimes I feel like I'm on a road alone and I don't know where I'm going. But as you've pointed out, that I've kind of made a job of relating to and helping people who have felt that same way which gives me purpose. So I have this little practice to wear. It's like a little treat. These are angel cards and let's just see what happens today. Let's see if the angels are gonna to talk to you. We're going you into the, ask for some revelation. Willingness. All right. Talk about that. This willingness. I didn't even want to come to this shit, honestly. I understand. Nothing against anybody in here, but I'm glad I did because I feel a lot better now. You are here. We all make mistakes. We all have blind spots. We all have had misgivings. You're still good. <laughs> Thank you. Nie, to już nie fajnie, bo macha nie przyniosłem. Cześć, dobra.